Hello, my name is Alex Isles and in today's episode I'm going to be talking about my first ever archaeological dig. Welcome back. So, as I mentioned before, I'm going to be talking about my first ever archaeological dig and that was at a place called Tor Woodley in the Scottish Borders. Now, I signed up because, as some of you will know, I'm starting my Masters in Archaeology in September. So I thought, what's the point in actually starting a Masters in Archaeology if you've never done an archaeological dig? And I also wanted to see if I would enjoy it, because I love reading the archaeology reports, I love looking at the history. And you've seen yourself, if you've been part of this channel for a while, how I like to look at the history and try and understand it, putting together various different topics, areas, modern sciences, all things like that, to better understand the past. And so because of that, I thought, well, you know, if I don't like the digs, then at least I can continue being an archaeologist, but looking in other ways, or I can just use it to help out with my tours, so my guided tours I provide. But all of those things came together, and when I went on the archaeological dig, I can tell you straight away, I did actually enjoy it, so there's good news there. Alongside that as well, if you like the sound of all of the stuff I've said already, why not you subscribe at this point? There's plenty more content like this coming, and I'm looking forward to having you along on the journey as I continue to grow this channel. In the meantime though, why don't we talk about what I was digging? So first of all, at Tor Woodley, there is a broch. So just here, this is the broch. And a broch is a bit like a roundhouse, just on steroids. So you've probably seen, if you've watched the channel for a while now, I did some talks about roundhouses and Iron Age hill forts in Northumberland. Now when you've got it, you've got this strong, massive wall. And that's around about three to four meters thick. And then it goes up into a tower. In a minute or two, I'll show you a reconstruction of a, um, of a broch that's going to be happening in the north of Scotland, and we'll talk about that in a minute or two. But basically, to sum up what a broch is, it's kind of like a roundhouse crossed with a castle. Normally when you have a broch, they have two walls. You have an outside wall and an inner wall. And so when you have the outside and inner wall, between the two walls, there's a spiral staircase that takes you right up to the top of the broch then normally they have near where the entrance is a guard room. Um, we'll discuss why this one doesn't have one in a second. And then alongside that as well, you can just see them here, there are ditches around the outside of the broch as well. They're always found on high ground and generally are above rivers. So there's a suggestion that they could almost be like customs points, controlling the land, controlling the movement of people, and for the local tribal aristocracy to be able to control the landscape in and around the broch. Now alongside this as well, there were a number of brochs. There's three brochs in the nearby area, near the area of Galashiels, which is a nearby town, which you can just see just up here above where I was filming. And these are Bowbroch and then Edinbroch nearby. So if you were sat here at the broch, and I actually took my lunch here, and you were sat roughly where the entrance is, and you're looking in this direction, you would actually be able to see Bowbroch on the other side of the hills. And this is a pretty high up, but Bowbroch is twice the height. It's right on the top of a hill, and so it was directly opposite. So you have these two brochs on top of hills, and then the river is in the valley in between. So when you've got that, I really think that sort of lines up with the idea of this being a controlling the land, controlling the river movements, and possibly alongside this as well, being a place for customs or at least declaring while you're traveling through the land. And so this gives us an idea of what the Iron Age life would have been like in these areas. Now, alongside this as well, brochs seem to be the next evolution in Iron Age lifestyle up in Northern Britain. So as I've talked about in my previous videos, we have different phases of hill fort building in the Iron Age. So to start off with, around about 800 BC, you start seeing the first hill forts appear, and then it goes through till around about the second century BC, at the latest, when they get abandoned. When they get abandoned, then that's a roughly about the same time as when in Northern Britain, up in, in today what is now Scotland, you start seeing brochs being built. So there could be the evolution of hill forts or moving on from hill forts into another type or another sort of way of defending the surrounding area from other people and controlling the landscape. 
So it's an interesting one there to see how when hill forts die out, these start appearing at least within uh, nor northern and also eastern Scotland. So that's where they have a high density and alongside that as well, you also see them in the islands around Scotland as well. And they're very dense in and around that area. And generally don't find them as much on the west or in the south of the, uh, of the country. So when you've got those brochs there, they are really interesting development. And this one here, is really interesting as well because the rock that they were trying to look at the surrounding area for, and I'll come to the archaeological dig in a little bit, is not really like other brochs. So instead of the double walls with the spiral staircase in between, it's only got one set of walls. So the suggestion when I was speaking to the archaeologist was that either the people building it didn't fully understand what a brock was or it wasn't properly finished. It's one of those two. They could also have been another type of brock or a different sort of style of building that hasn't been identified yet, but that's not really what's thought by archaeologists. It's thought instead that they instead possibly just didn't fully understand how other brocks were built. So it could be a slightly different culture or a different group of people who are building this. Following on from that, it's quite interesting because it was used in the 1st and 2nd century AD. And when it was used in the 1st and 2nd century AD, it had Roman material inside of it. But there is a little bit of a problem. It was first investigated in 1870 by a Hillwalkers Association. And so they did a very rough dig, but thankfully they didn't dig down to the lowest levels of occupation. So it was re-dug by Mr. Piggott, an archaeologist in the 1950s. So when he re-dug it in the 1950s, they actually got right down to the bottom layer and they saw it had been occupied during the Roman period. Now, one of the folk sort of myths that's been associated with this place is the concept is maybe the Romans destroyed it because they could only find sort of material that sort of died off around the second century. But the archaeology report initially from the 1870s was not professional. It wasn't done to the same levels and they probably wouldn't have picked up on later occupation into the early Middle Ages or what some people call the Dark Ages. So it's possible that this was used much later and then was abandoned and finally collapsed because the walls collapsed outwards. And the suggestion was, well, the Romans destroyed it because just nearby is Trimontium. And Trimontium was a large Roman camp that later on was the location where Septimius Severus put 40,000 Roman soldiers when he did count his campaigns in Northern Britain in today is what Scotland and committed, you know, genocidal campaigns against the Northern British. So there's one for you right there. I probably lean where the archaeologists who I was working with, as a, um, who are a part of a group called Dig Ventures, I'll talk about that again later, and they sort of believe that what happened is that the Brock had survived for a certain amount of time, and when it had survived for a certain amount of time, it was just abandoned because it was no longer suitable for purpose, and then it was time and decay that finally caused it to collapse, rather than an aggressive attack by the Romans. So there's one for you there. The other thing that I absolutely found fascinating about it is it's actually built on top of a hill fort. So surrounding the area, there is actually a hill fort on here, which is way larger than the Broch. So there was a pre-existing Iron Age settlement on this site, and then later on, there's a break, and then they built the Broch. So that's a really interesting one right there, where you can see a moving between different groups and that sort of changeover. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you what a brock would have looked like and talk to you a bit about a cool project that's going to be happening in the north of Scotland. And then after that, I'll be talking to you about the dig itself, my archaeological dig, and what was involved in that. So this right here is what a brock would have looked like. And this is actually a reconstruction as a part of the Caithness Broch project. So Caithness is up in the north of Scotland and it's a really interesting project because they have a high density of brochs up in the area and so they've received the funding, they've got the land together and they're actually going to fully reconstruct one of these so tourists coming back can see a little part of Northern British and Scottish history. So there's an amazing thing right there. So the broch where I was doing my dig near to would have looked a bit like this. But as I mentioned before, it did have some differences. 
This brock right here is going to have the two sets of walls with the spiral staircase in between going up on the inside. And you can also see it's got an external wall and buildings, outbuildings, inside the fortification. So that shows you how it's a slightly later brock or a slightly different construction to the brock that I was involved with on the archaeological dig. So I just wanted to show you that. If you do have a chance, do look up the Caithness uh, Brock project because it's an amazing piece of archaeological reconstruction. And as you know, I'm really passionate about archaeological reconstruction as well. So that's the Caithness uh, Brock project. And now I'm actually going to talk about the archaeological dig itself. And you're probably going, Alex, you've really drawn this out. So how did the dig come about? Well, a group of German archaeologists who are interested in the Roman frontiers from the Roman German Institute came across and did a number of geophysical surveys in and around the Brock. And when they were doing the geophysical surveys in and around the Brock, what they found was that there was outside the Brock a number of marks in the ground which looked like enclosures or possibly could also look like structures, possibly like houses. So because of that, they notified the Trimontium Trust and then the Trimontium Trust got in touch with Dig Ventures who are based in County Durham. When they're based in County Durham, they said, yes, we'll do the dig on your behalf. Now, due to a number of domino effects, in 2018 it didn't happen, 2019 it didn't happen. Obviously, 2020, 2021, we had COVID, so it didn't happen then. And then finally, now this year, in 2022, they managed to get it started. So they got the dates in, they got a load of volunteers together, and they got us to come up. So I heard about this, and I saw it was run by Dig Ventures, which is a company I've wanted to do some work with for a while. So on Sunday, the 12th of June, I drove up to uh, Scotland, to, uh, to Galashiels, and obviously to Tor Woodley, which is what I've been talking about, the Brock right here. So it took it about an hour and 45 minutes from Newcastle where I live, and it was a two-day dig initially. So there was a Saturday day and there was a Sunday day. Now on Saturday, they took out most of the turf and they dug down a certain distance uh, before the end of the day but they needed to finish off on a Sunday. And on a Sunday, there were fewer volunteers. So I turned up and it was me and another volunteer working on a trench. When we were working on the trench, we were digging through and we were looking to try and find as much information as possible about what was going on in the surrounding area and this small settlement that could exist outside of the Iron Age um, uh, Broch was basically a very interesting area to look at. So as we were digging through, I can say with some pride, that I found the first find of the day. And I think this is uh, something that I'm very pleased about, but at the same time, it's also quite funny and I hope you find the humor in this too. But it was a tiny wee piece of pottery. And when it was a tiny piece of pottery, it wasn't Iron Age pottery. It wasn't even first or second century AD Roman pottery. Uh, no, unfortunately, it was uh, 16th century pottery, glazed pottery, and it was actually probably put into the fields during the um, Middle Ages or slightly later on, because what they would do is, just like today, if you're doing gardening, they would break up pieces of pots and they would scatter them into the fields to help with drainage. So because of that, this likely little bit of pottery was probably broken at some point down in a settlement down in Galashiels and then was taken up and scattered on the fields to help with ploughing during that period. Following on from that, uh, slightly later on, I kept finding these small pieces of coke or uh, what kind of looks like charcoal. And so when I kept finding them, I was kept finding them, I was getting really excited. I was just like, oh, is, is this an Iron Age iron working site or is this a metal working site? Is this going to be something really exciting like that? And then later on, one of the archaeologists talked to me and said, yeah, we're pretty sure now that it's probably a Victorian Age steam powered tractor. And so if you can imagine shoveling the charcoal or the coke into the back of the tractor and then it's a steam powered one going up and down the hill, as it's going along, it might drop pieces of coke or charcoal. And so they was ended up in the ground as they were plowing. <laughs> so there again, my entire dreams of suddenly that we were somehow on the outskirts of this amazing Iron Age, you know, uh, metalworking site when then again sort of popped again. As we dug through the layers, eventually we got down to the natural and we looked in all of the different trenches and the archaeologists explained to us that basically they'd been contacted by the German archaeologists and the German archaeologists had said to them, well, I'm, we're really sorry, but we think our GPS coordinates were off. So we probably were digging in the wrong site. 
Now you might be sitting there going, wow Alex, that's a long story to take us to that point. But I wanted to make a video on it nevertheless because I thought there's two points I'd like to make about this. So first of all, just because the area we're digging proved not to be the area where there was actually a site outside of the Brock, doesn't mean it was a failed dig. We've actually been able to say, right, okay, those areas right there where we were digging, they actually are now out of the picture. We can go, no, they are not the sites where there was any settlement. And then when they do further digs in, the, in and around the area, they can go, right, okay, we've ruled that out. Let's move these over and try and find something else. But secondly for me as well, it was an amazing learning experience because for the day I got to sit down, learn from the archaeologists and catch up. Because as you know, I said I'm doing a master's in September. Now obviously my background isn't in archaeology. I'm a tour guide and my undergraduate degree was actually in politics and my master's was in business innovation. So because of that, my sort of love and my passion of history is self-taught. Uh, my library is huge and I've read on every single topic about the northeast of England and really memorized and learned all about this. But I always felt that if I'm going to be doing this, I need to know that I'm going to love it and to get out there to have that experience of digging, to have all of that. And the one thing that I learned is I really enjoyed it. And I learned how to do the drawings, so to do an archaeological cross section of the side of a trench, how to do the dig itself, how to search through things and how to basically understand the different layers that you're digging through and the changes in the soil as you go through. So even though there was nothing there, I wasn't disappointed because I came away with such a rich knowledge and alongside that as well, I got to go up and visit a place where there was a broch, which is something I've been really wanting to do for a while. And I had thought most of the brochs were much further up in the northeast of Scotland. And so because of that, to be able to travel to one that was just two hours away from where I live was an amazing experience. And it really, really helped me to have a positive experience of archaeology. So if you've sat through that and maybe you're not a regular and you're going, oh, I really hoped he was going to find some amazing find or something like that. Well, one of the things to take away from this is that just because we don't find something absolutely amazing, groundbreaking or something like that, doesn't mean that the scientific and historical learning isn't there. And for me, I have to say that, you know, even though I didn't find anything other than obviously some um, 16th century pottery, I'm still really pleased I did it and I'm looking forward to doing future digs because there's other digs in and around the area there's such as in uh, Cumbria that I've been uh, made aware of and possibly also in the northeast of England which I'll keep you posted on as I find more information about them that means that I can now go in trained up with the experience and volunteer again and to learn more about history and to get hands on into sites. And who knows in the future when I'm doing a video then, you might be sitting there and I suddenly go, well, do you know what everyone, you're gonna hear something amazing today. So today's video has been a bit of a winding one and I hope you've enjoyed it nevertheless because I've been able to introduce you obviously to another Iron Age structure at Brock. I've been able to talk to you about the history of those, their construction, all of that sort of stuff but also to tell you about the experience of my first ever archaeological dig and so I really hope you've enjoyed that and that also you found some humour in the title for this video. In the meantime though, stay safe and well. If you haven't already, please do like and subscribe, share the videos with your friends. And if you'd like to support me further, I do also have a Patreon, which you can find in the description and also another app called Coffee if you just want to do a one-off donation if you're feeling that way. No pressure if you don't want to. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and safe journeys and look after yourself. Thank you so much.